I am Anis Ayuni will start your presentation with introduction and theoretical background. A vortex is a physical phenomenon that occurs when a gas or a liquid moves in circles at the center of a vortex line that the matter swirls around and they form when there is a difference in the velocity of what surrounds the line. This experiment is about two types of vortices are distinguished in the dynamics of the motion, which is free and force vortex. In this experiment, free vortex form when water runs out of a vessel through a central hole in the tank base and the degree of rotation being determined by the initial disturbance. The fluid mass rotates freely in a free vortex flow because there is no external process. The rotation is caused by either internal action or a previously imported rotation. So, the rotating plate is used to create a free vortex. We can see the free vortex flow through an opening at the bottom of the shallow vessel, which is the fluid speeds and rates of rotation are created toward the center. Fluid mass rotates due to conservation of angular momentum and velocity inversely proportional to the radius. Besides that, the force vortex motion is caused by the external forces on the fluid, for example, is impeller of a pump. In this experiment, the force vortex flow is created by using the rotating plate with the addition of the pedal. The force vortex speed is zero in the center and increases according to the distance measured away from it. During force vortex motion, an external source of power causes the fluid mass to rotate by exerting a continuous tension on it and causing it to revolve at a constant angular velocity. The tangential velocity is directly proportional of the radius. So, both free and force vortex have a linear pressure at the center. However, the minimum pressure for free vortex is substantially lower than for force vortex. So, the example vortices are hurricanes, tornadoes, and air moving over a plane. The application of the vortex flow that we can be seen is in turbine design, natural phenomenon, and also in creating safety against natural disaster. Besides that, the engineers and designers are able to characterize force and free vertices that generate in machinery. The apparatus for these experiments are profile measuring gauge, orifice, pedal, pitted tube, and surface prop. Next, this is experimental procedure. For general startups procedure, first, place the study bench on the hydraulic bench. Second, the inlet and outlet hose was set up. Third, the stand of the equipment was adjusted to reach the horizontal position. For experiment 1 is free vortex. Step 1, place an orifice with a diameter of 8mm on the base of a cylinder tank. Step 2, close the output valve and adjust the 3-way valve to let the water flow. Step 3, switch on the pump and control valve on the hydraulic bench. Maintain the water level by adjusting the control valve. Step 4, collect the vertex profile once the water level was stable. Step 5, push down the profile measuring cache until the both of sharp point touch the water surface. Step 6, measure up the height and the value of the water level. Uh, step 7, in order to measure the velocity, use the pitted uh, tube by sinking it into the water. The depth of the pitted tube in the water was measured. Uh, last step is repeat step 3 until 7 for another two orifice with diameter 16mm and 24mm. Experiment 2 is force vortex. The procedure first place a closed pump with two pedals on the base of the cylinder tank. Number 2 close the output valve and adjust three way valve to let the water flow. Number 3 ensure the water flow out from the tank with the siphon effect by raising the hose to above the water level in the tank. Number 4 Fill the outlet hose with water before letting the water to flow into the sump tank. Number 5. Measure the angular speed of the pedals by counting the number of circles in a certain time. Number 6. Push down the surface prop until the sharp point touches the water surface. Number 7. Measure and record the height from top of the measuring gauge to bridge. And last, repeat step 3 until 7 with different volumetric flow rate. Next, we need to do procedure for general shutdown. Firstly, close the valve and switch off the pump. And secondly, the orifice, pedal and other accessories were removed from the cylindrical vessel. 
So that's all the procedure for this experiment. I will pass this presentation for the next presenter. Uh, Assalamualaikum and hi. Uh, my name is Nurul Shahida Shafika Binti Rusdi. Uh, my student ID is 2024525596. Okay, so from the first part of for the first part of the experiment, uh, we use orifice with different diameters in order to observe and study free vortex. Okay, so uh, from the data and result given, all the orifices show common trends where the velocity increase while the diameter or the radius in decreases. This is because uh, a drop in elevation since pressure. Uh, in the experiment or in the free, in the free surface and water uh, are same while uh, so that this the h is constant okay so from table one uh, we can see that the diameter uh, decreases throughout the experiment as the velocity increases this is shown is shown that the vortex uh, also uh, the Vortex produce is greater uh, throughout the experiment. Okay, so uh, for free vortex, in order to calculate the value of velocity, we need to um, we need to gather uh, data as shown in table one. So for table one, uh, we can see that as the diameter decreases throughout the experiment, the velocity uh, is calculate uh, the velocity that being calculated is increases throughout the experiment okay so uh, this the value the the velocity the velocity value of the table one is uh, actual velocity but we need we also need to find the theoretical velocity so in order to get theoretical velocity we need to plot a graph of pressure head against one over r2 squared so um, as the the graph is plotted like just as shown in figure one, uh, the grad uh, we need to plot the gradient also. Okay, after the after the gradient is plotted uh, and calculated, um, the given uh, the given formula uh, as shown in as in sample calculation is used to find the value of k in order to get theoretical velocity value. So after the value of k is calculated, uh, we can calculate the value of uh, theoretical velocity and uh, after the, the the value of velocity is calculated uh, we can plot a velocity a graph of velocity against radius which um, to get the to get and to conclude the relationship between velocity against radius Okay, in order to get the actual velocity and theoretical velocity for diameter 16 mm, uh, the same step and calculation is used uh, uh, to get the value of velocity. Okay, so uh, from figure 3 and 4, you can see that uh, the gradient of uh, the gradient of the graph pressure head acts against 1 over r squared is slightly increases uh, and different a bit different from uh, diameter 8 millimeter before uh, but it's also show the same pattern where the pressure head increases mm. okay so uh, and after we get the gradient the we can we can calculate the value of k in order to calculate the theoretical velocity value so after get after we get that the value of theoretical velocity, uh, we can plot the graph in Figure Four, which, um, as you can see, that the both uh, at both actual and theoretical uh, velocity value is decreasing slightly decreasing, uh, and it's almost constant, uh, and. Okay, so it almost constant. It the same goes to for orifice diameter twenty four millimeter. Uh, the same step and uh, formula is used in order to get the value of actual velocity and theoretical velocity. Okay, so uh, the pressure head uh, against uh, the uh, the graph of pressure head against one over r two squared is plot and the value of gradient also we get and then. 
uh, the value of k is also calculated as usual using formula uh, after that we can plot a graph velocity against radius okay so from this we can see that um, for diameter 24 millimeter uh, the radius the graph of velocity against radius uh, we can see that it's almost uh, constant uh, as the gradient is Okay, so from the all data co uh, collection, uh, we can compare the re the result of between the different orifices, and it also shows that uh, since uh, the higher it, the bigger the diameter, the greater vortex will produce, and uh, as the diameter uh, in uh, decreases, the velocity increases. Uh, okay, so um, from the graph of velocity against radius, uh, we can see that both uh, actual velocity and theoretical velocity value showing the same uh, pattern, which almost constant across across through the experiment. Um, it's supposed to be okay. The actual velocity is supposed to be constant, just as the theoretical one, but given the data uh, it's probably the due to human error uh, and okay and so uh, the product in between the velocity and radius is supposed to be constant uh, this is due to the actual vorticity component uh, which is zero in value okay and so uh, the product in between the velocity and radius is supposed to be constant uh, this is due to the actual vorticity component uh, which is zero in value assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh my name is Muhammad Nur Shafi bin Zainal and I will continue the lab presentation based on the table above is the data obtained after doing the calculation for the angular velocity and the theoretical h value and the sample calculation was then force run one. For the discussion, to study the vortex profile of force vortex and its relationship with angular velocity, the force vortex experiment was initiated. To create a force vortex, a paddle is being connected to the bottom of the tank, thus resulting in obtaining different sets of data. Based on all the figure above, it can be concluded that the trend of graph that been obtained is directly proportional to each other. As the distance from center increase, the measured h naught and theoretical h value also increases. So, it can be assumed that the stream function form is parabolic in nature. The second observation that can be made is regarding the angular velocity. The angular velocity value is different from each run. That is because the number of rotation that can be accomplished in 60 seconds. The more rotation accomplished in 60 seconds, the higher value of angular velocity that can be achieved. Angular velocity also related to the height from top of measuring gauge to bridge H. When the value of h increases, the value of angular velocity also increases. So, it can be seen that the curve obtained from all the figures above represents the angular velocity value. In conclusion, the objective of this experiment has been achieved, which is to investigate the physical phenomena relating to free and force vortex, and to study the relationship of velocity and angular velocity to the surface profile of free and force vortex respectively. The experiment can be performed by using the equipment prepared by the faculty and they also included various diameter of orifices which are 8mm, 12mm, 16mm and 24mm. The various diameter of orifices will be used in the free vortex experiment. Both surface profiles can be observed by calculating water surface profiles and plotting the graph distance from center against height from top of measuring gauge to bridge hitch. In the first experiment, which is the free vortex experiment, the orifices diameter is being manipulated. This is because to observe the free vortex phenomena and the vortex velocity produced. As the diameter of orifices increases, the velocity obtained will be decreases. This must be due to the fact that bigger orifices diameter yields greater vortex. While during force vortex experiment, a paddle is being connected to the bottom of the tank to produce the vortex. From the figure, the curve obtained can be said that to represent the angular velocity value. This is because the number of rotation can be made in 60 seconds responsible to the angular velocity value and relating it to the height from top of measuring gauge to bridge H. Comparing between the free and force vortex, the stream function form is hyperbolic and parabolic in nature respectively. When doing the experiment, it is advised to repeat the experiment for more than once and then take the average reading. This is because to get better accuracy when recording the data. Secondly, make sure to learn and understand on how to conduct the experiment. 
This is to make sure that the experiment being done smoothly. Thirdly, an additional an additional equipment is advised to be used. This is because to make sure to have a better visual on the flow produced and to locate the center line of flow field accurately.